Hi, it's Jessica here from Fox's Vlognets. Uh, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Oh, so, today I will be showing you what I honestly think is a knitter's worst nightmare. It is when blocking goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, as always, I include relevant show notes uh, and links within the description below. So, make sure you check those out at the end of this video. And, of course, you're joining me here today from a beautiful Mangafai in Northland in New Zealand. Uh, and again, I am battling with our winter sunshine um, to film this, and you'd be forgiven for thinking it was summer until you step outside and it is a balmy 10 degrees Celsius, which is cold. Um, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoy this video, please do give it a like. If anything, in camaraderie, I think this is awful. So, now blocking can be most definitely terrifying. And when you're starting out knitting, um, I think that's rightly so. I watched the very first sweater that I had painstakingly knitted be completely ruined in a matter of moments right in front of my eyes. And all I could do was watch. Um, and just do anything I could to stop myself from crying, which I of course failed miserably at that. Um, yeah. So before I even attempted this, I had watched countless videos on YouTube, uh, read blogs about the best way to block, tips and tricks, and of course I spoke to experienced knitters. So this really shouldn't have even happened. Uh, but I'm not an expert in everything, and now you can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> So wet blocking is not a thing everywhere in uh, everywhere in the world. It's not something that I've really um, ever seen before until I had seen it on quite a few YouTube videos, mainly American based. And usually finished projects in my family would be finished with steam. So I think let me start off by first explaining the key differences um, and benefits between the two types of blocking. So wet blocking, I'll start with wet blocking. Uh, this is where you soak your freshly completed garment in water mixed with a mild wool solution detergent and you gently squeeze out the water and dry it flat in shape. Uh, you can also use pins to keep it in place or stretch it in the hope um, and then pin it. Uh, that method is, um, it seems super excessive but it does a really really great job for a number of reasons. Um, as you're soaking the garment the wool fibers bloom or fatten out as they fill up with water. Kind of like when you blow up a balloon and deflate it again and then do it again. And it can be great for increasing the snuggle factor of an item. I did it with this alpaca jumper. And of course, wash out anything that was in the yarn when you bought it. Um, and when you use a wool detergent, it leaves a little more, it leaves everything a little bit more nourished um, as it's you know, looking after the fibers. The other reason why this can be great for any um, any lace additions to your garments is that these somehow lay more open and flat after a wet block. And it's kind of magic how it does that, to be honest. Um, depending on the stitches, it may need to be pinned into shape as it dries, which really opens it out. Um, it can be pretty time consuming, uh, especially depending on the time of year. Uh, luckily, where I am in New Zealand, it is known as the Winterless North, which you've heard me mention before, uh, which totally isn't true. We definitely um, have winter, but we have bright, sunny bluebird days, kind of like today, uh, that do warm things up a little and speed up the process. Uh, process. So now we've covered the wet blocking, the next option is steam blocking, and you've probably guessed that this next method uses steam. Uh, steam is really great for giving garments a freshen up uh, instead of a wash. I have a steamer that I bought relatively cheaply um, from Kmart actually, but if you don't have one, a water spray bottle and a cotton or linen tea towel with a handheld iron will definitely do the trick. The tea towel here really needs to be a natural fiber like cotton or linen and this protects your garment from the heat of the iron. Uh, the spray bottle also adds a little more dampness than just the steam as well and it makes sure that nothing gets um, nothing gets singed. Uh, as you may have guessed, um, 
Yeah, steam blocking is probably best used on natural fibres. Anything with nylon or polyester, I would really tread carefully with there. So, depending on the way that you've made your garment, um, this may be all that you need to actually help the stitches settle into place um, and look really nice. Not everything needs to undergo a full wet block, but the trick with this way is to not squash or press too hard. The aim of the game is to steam, not squash. And if you press too hard, you'll actually flatten out your object. And when you think about a yarn, it is round. Uh, so not ideal to turn it into a flat ribbon. You'd probably be pretty bummed. So, using a steam block, your garment will, ready, uh, will be ready much faster. But it does need time to cool and dry into that shape that you're wanting. The other important things to note are the kind of yarn that you have. Uh, mainly if this is superwash or not. Superwash is a highly chemical process that treats the yarn so that it can be washed on a delicate cycle in the washing machine. Um, yeah, it's not very nice. And non-superwash yarn, which I personally prefer, is so delicate and it is so temperamental uh, that you basically have to treat it with the utmost respect. Uh, basically, like you have a live mouse trap that you have to move with your mouth. Um, it's not really, but that's kind of how you have to treat it with care um, and danger. So I learned this lesson the hard way. So what went wrong? Settle in and learn from my mistakes, my horrifying mistakes. So just before we went into level four lockdown in New Zealand due to COVID-19, uh, which was back in March, I stocked up with some yarns and patterns to settle in and, and make, you know. Uh, I really wanted to make myself some sweaters um, as I knew they'd take a little while, uh, a little while longer. And as we were going to be um, heading into winter, I have loads of beautiful snuggly new things to wear. So win-win. I invested in some expensive 100% fine grade merino that was hand dyed here in um, New Zealand. It was non-superwash yarn that I had bought five skeins of and they were only 200 meters each. And this sweater took me so damn long. I was learning loads of new techniques and I was trying to take it slow just so I could enjoy you know, the whole process. Um, I also failed to reach gauge with my gauge swatch and was sort of making it up as I went along, which is beyond dangerous. But I also used way too much yarn. Anyway, um, I also ended up having to frog back about oh, 10 centimeters of the body. So by the time I'd actually finished late one night, I was so happy. I tried it on to show my partner, who was of course suitably impressed and thought it looked fantastic. I went to bed happy and content. And that was the only time I had that sweater on. So. The next morning, I was so excited to finish my sweater properly, like all the blocking videos that I had seen. Uh, and I watched the designer's um, Instagram stories and instructions on her Instagram, which despite making me super nervous, I was determined to do it properly as I spent all this time on this amazing jumper. So I woke up in the morning, I filled um, the bucket with lukewarm water and my wool wash. I folded up the sweater carefully and I let it soak for the required 15 minutes before carefully lifting it out and squeezing out the excess water while it was still um, folded. Great tip there. Um, and here is where it went wrong. The videos that I had seen had shown all the garments being squeezed out and popped into their washing machines on a delicate spin cycle and coming out the other side completely beautiful, no longer stopping and wet um, and stunning before being laid out carefully to dry. My front loader washing machine didn't have just a spin cycle. Well, it does, I've discovered it now at the time. It had a rinse and spin cycle. And I thought, how bad can that be? It's just a bit of a rinse. All yarn is the same. It would be gentle. I've popped in woolens in the machine before on a gentle cycle and they've been fine. It'll be fine. Wrong. So very flipping wrong. I popped in my freshly <laughs> labored over sweater into the machine, did a gentle spin, rinse and cycle cold water and the door locked and I watched as it in front of my eyes as it felted more and more with every turn of the machine and there was nothing that I could do. It was locked. I sat on the floor and really 
I just about had a little cry about it. When the machine had finished violating my sweater, I opened the door to find that what was now half the size and stiff as a board, and there was nothing that I could do about it. All the fabric softener and hair conditioner in the world wasn't going to fix this puppy, and I could only get angry with myself. It was, it was totally my own fault. I did at that point then have a proper sob, and I mean, yeah, look at it. It's awful. <laughs> While it's a heartbreaking mistake, it's definitely one that I'll never, ever, ever make again. And um, despite this being horrible and completely ruined, I still can't bring myself to throw it away. It's, it's so silly, I know. But, oh my gosh, the work. <laughs> the work. Um, I have since wet blocked all my subsequent sweaters. And they've all lived to tell the tale. Yeah. But this does bring me to some very important pointers that I would love to impart with you uh, and share that lessened wisdom. So, know your yarns. Is your yarn superwash or not? If it is, you still have to be pretty careful with it and it really is best to hand wash your garments gently. Uh, but if it's not, you need to follow the golden, the golden rules, my golden rules, which are lukewarm, tepid water only. Wool does not like hot water. Uh, do not agitate or swirl around your garment while it's soaking. Just leave it. Never wring. Always gently squeeze. Imagine it's like an avocado. And use a towel and roll it into a sausage to squeeze out the water and stand on it. It does a similar job to a machine spin, but without the completely um, terrifying factor that goes with that. So there you go. <laughs> blocking when blocking goes wrong and um, have you ever done anything like this as well or made something that you've completely ruined or do you have any tips to add to this for anyone else watching this who is just looking at me and laughing add them in the comments below I really do hope that this episode may have saved at least one lovingly made sweater and then my work here is done and I will feel good <laughs> So thanks again for being with me here today and if you've enjoyed this episode please do give it a like and make sure that you subscribe to my channel turning on the notifications for the next episode uh, of Fox's Vlog. <laughs>